So when, going back to the uh, to the question of like, okay, you found an experiment that would make quantum mechanics fail, and you need to convince them. So let's say that happens to you tomorrow. Yes. How would you go about it? How would like, I go about it? Or, or like someone well, that you know oh, does it. How would you, well, what exactly would you do? Well, okay. I mean, I think the most obvious thing that I would do is to get the experiment repeated by um, various um, uh, different groups. Um, I mean, in, in, in the talk, uh, in the sort of popular talk that I give on this, I raise this point and I say, well, you want it repeated by six different um, groups working in six different countries and on six different latitudes funded by six different funding agencies and so forth. And if they all come out with the same result, then you may at least have a starting chance of convincing the general community, but not until then. So that's the first priority. Um, the um, second, um, of, of course, the second line of defence, which most people will take, is okay. So the experiments do seem to come out this way, and that's reliable. But but your interpretation of them is somehow wonky. Um, so uh, and in in particular, in the case of uh, of trying to show that um, quantum mechanics is not working at the um, the scale of everyday life, so um, uh, the, the, um, the the obvious ob objection is uh, to an experiment which tried to show that quantum mechanics is not working is the effects of decoherence. The, the idea that the environment um, is always trying to screw up your the behaviour of your quantum mechanical system, and that gets worse and worse as you go to, from microscopic to macroscopic. And so you've simply forgotten about some um, uh, so, some part of the environment which is is giving rise to decoherence effects you you hadn't worried about. And if you take those into account, uh, quantum mechanics will continue to be okay. And that's going to be rather hard to find, frankly. Um, it's um, and I suspect it's going to be one of those cases where you know there's no there's really no logical. Um, argument uh, you can give, which will be a hundred percent convincing. Um, you uh, be like uh, like special relativity, really. Um, if you think about what happened there, you see, um, people had for a couple of hundred years really believed in the uh, certainly in the nineteenth century they believed in the ether so as a right. means of propagating electromagnetic waves and so forth. Um, Along comes, well, along first of all, of course, comes Michelson Morley and then comes Einstein um, and proposes a new way of looking at it. Um, lots of people never accepted that. Um, lots of people went to their deathbeds um, without ever accepting it. Um, in the end, and there were a whole string of objectors. I, I had actually had to review a book not so long ago, one of these rather, rather um, diligent um, scholastic efforts by a German PhD um, student in the history of science about the people who um, opposed Einstein, not just in 1905, not uh, not even just um, uh, uh, up to 1918, but right through the 20s and 30s. I mean, there was a fairly substantial group of people who did oppose him. <laughs> well, I guess you cynically you could say in the end they, they died off. And, uh, uh, you know, the new generation was um, more prepared to uh, to receive uh, Einstein's ideas, and I, I suspect strongly that's going to be the case with quantum mechanics if it does or not, or if most people think it turns out.